One of the most asked questions I get at this point in time is, Charles, what the heck happened to the VR6 Turbo that we were working on? Let me kind of recap. 98 GTI VR6 five-speed manual, bought it, did some engine rehab, turbocharged it, did some transmission rehab, put a limited slip differential in it, pulled the dash out and all the interior, resealed the doors on the blend doors, and got the car right. As, well, so I thought anyway. Uh, then, one of the last things we did was actually install a big brake kit on the front brake setup. And the brake kit from Willwood is outstanding. Well, on that break-in drive of these big brake kits, I actually experienced some pretty intense wheel lockup. Like, legit, it was pretty scary wheel lockup. So, sort of put the car to the side for a while, focused on the R32, focused on the Golf R. Of course, we got the Miata project coming out at some point, hopefully very soon. But I really wanted to get back to the Mark III and at least figure out what the heck was going on with the brakes. In addition to that, I had to do a little bit of maintenance, like an oil change. I actually used the car for, uh, for some B-roll for another video project, so it had like three times the oil in it that it was really supposed to have. So we got the oil change done, and I figured what an amazing opportunity to go ahead and figure out what was up with the brakes. My initial thing was, let's go ahead and check the ABS module for fault. So plug the scan tool in dial up the ABS module address word 03 and found that I couldn't talk to it. After a quick scan of the wiring diagram, decided to go ahead and check my powers and grounds at the module. Well, there's two fuses listed in the wiring diagram for the ABS module. It says it's underneath the hood in the engine compartment, but it's not, it's actually underneath the dash. So went ahead and put my power probe on those two fuses, no power on either one of the fuses. So to really quick try and figure out why we didn't have power, disconnected the battery, I know the resistance check is not the best check in the world, but did a quick resistance check and found that my resistance from the terminal at the battery positive to those fuses, both of them, was like 18 billion ohms or something like that. It was basically reading that the wires were open. Now, this was really interesting because it got me thinking, did I ever have communication with the ABS module? Did I ever check it? Did I break one of my own rules and not do a complete scan of the car before doing a big job? Well, I don't know, I don't really remember. So I did confirm, no power at those two wires, fine, not a horribly big deal. But rather than try and figure that out first, I wanted to get talking to the module to see if we had other issues. So what I did was I just applied power to those two connections and was able to talk to the module. Next thing I found was that I had a code for the hydraulic pump, which is not terribly uncommon on these, especially with age, and I had codes for three of the four wheel speed sensors, both front and the left rear. So after finding those faults, I went into the measured value blocks, watched the scan tool while I spun the wheel by hand, found I had no readings. All right, not ideal, but at least I confirmed that I wasn't getting communication. And what was interesting is I actually didn't get readings from any of the four wheel speed sensors, not just the ones I had faults for. So next step was a quick visual inspection. Yeah, the sensors are there. Yeah, the wiring looks good. Went ahead and disconnected the ABS module, cleaned that connection out. It was a little bit gross inside of there, a tiny bit of corrosion, but I don't think enough that would have caused no readings at all. Maybe enough to cause an inaccurate reading, but to have nothing read was a little strange. After cleaning that connection up as best I could, plugged it back in and did the same thing. Went back into our measured value blocks, spun each wheel by hand, found that now I got speed from both front wheels so I could see the actual numbers change when I spun the front wheels. Unfortunately, in the back, no speed at all. So at this point, I got readings from the front, need to decide whether we go with the pump diagnosis next or the rear wheel speed sensors. Well, what I wanted to do, since I had the scan tool there anyway, is output test that hydraulic pump and see if it comes on. Unfortunately, the test wouldn't even run, thanks. Um, so that wasn't an option, but what I did do is I did disconnect it. I powered it up manually with the power probe. The pump comes on, but she don't sound very happy. So that may need to be rebuilt or something, but let's put that to the side right now. But now I know I probably do have an issue with the pump. Next up was diagnosing the rear wheel speed sensors. Now, because I'm flying solo in this job and I, for the life of me, could not find my jumper wires, I decided rather than checking it at the ABS module, which would have been a more complete test, I was gonna test it at the connections underneath the back seat. That way I could look at my multimeter set to AC volts and spin the wheel at the same time and see if I could pick up a reading. So I plug my meter into the connector, I spin the wheel, and I get nothing on either rear wheel. 
which is really weird. Haven't done anything in that system yet, so uh, I was kind of surprised that I got nothing from either one. Now we've hit another point where we got to make a decision. Do we disconnect these wheel speed sensors and try and do that same thing at the sensor? Well, getting to that connection is kind of a pain in the butt, especially with like out a jumper harness or something to plug into. So I decided to do more of a visual inspection. What I did was I took the caliper off, I took the caliper carrier off, I took the rotor off, and I pulled the rotor and looked at it and went, bingo, no wheel on the rotor. So on the Mark III's you have a wheel speed sensor, and you have a ring that goes on the back of the rotor that picks up wheel speed. Well, that's all fine and good until someone puts rotors on it and doesn't transfer that ring over to the new rotors, which is, I'm assuming, what happened. Again, I haven't done anything with the rear brakes yet, so that the car had to have come that way. I don't think Gremlins went in and stole those rings off my car, which made me really go back and wonder again, were we having these issues the whole time with the brakes? And I just never knew. Did I never have calm? With the ABS module, did I never have wheel speed from those back two wheels? Well, that answer is clearly yes. Why wasn't the ABS light on? Maybe the bulbs burned out because, you know, this car's old, so it actually had a bulb. Maybe the bulbs burned out, and that's why the light wasn't on to begin with. And you know what? This definitely just solidifies this car was not well-loved uh, over its life. But I was both shocked that I didn't have any rings on those back rotors, and also not really, because I've seen that a bunch of times, and it's usually, hey, my cruise control doesn't work after having rear brakes, or my ABS lights on ever since someone did rear brakes on it, and they just forgot to transfer that ring over. So at this point, we have a handful of options. We can get rings, put them on the rotors, put the brakes back together. I'll have to do the left side as well. I only took the right side apart, and see where we get, see if maybe driving it with actual wheel speed registering straightens out the brake setup. Maybe I can force the hydraulic pump to work during an ABS situation, and that, you know, kind of gets it unstuck or gets it a little happier. I, I don't really know. We can delete ABS and go with a full manual brake setup. So we'll add a new master cylinder, uh, maybe a booster. I'm not sure if the booster has to be replaced or not. Probably a new brake reservoir, which would be awesome because it's ugly and gross anyway. And we would have to add a proportioning valve to distribute the front brake bias and the rear brake bias properly. So if we go that route, that pretty much solves the problem guaranteed. If we put the rings on, we're still going to have to do some testing to see if we need an ABS module or we need to rebuild the ABS module or does it need some kind of attention. So this was a really interesting one. A pretty basic diagnosis, no power to the module, corrected that. We still need to figure out what's wrong with that wiring to the ABS module and maybe we run overlays, maybe we run new wires, maybe we try and trace down the actual break point. It's weird that both of them have this issue. So I don't know if maybe something when we were rewrapping the harness got messed up, or again, it never worked to begin with, which is kind of what my guess is. At some point, we're going to upgrade the rear brakes anyway, so do I want to go through the hassle of finding those rings and expense of finding those rings? Getting them from a junkyard is probably the easiest way to do it swapping them on, and then driving it again. You know, I, what I want to do is I want to see is the ABS module good before we just decide to drop it all, get rid of it all, and do a manual setup. So there we go. There's the Mark III GTI update. The brake situation is just mind-boggling to me that I've had the car the whole time and never experienced any brake issue at all up until the point of doing the big brake kit in the front and then that exposing a problem that really existed the entire time I've owned the car anyway. If you guys want to catch up on more of these Mark III videos, there is a playlist. I'll be sure to link it in the card or whatever side it is and down in the description. As always, questions or comments go down below. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.